Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and I don't think I've said this in any of my previous videos since I've moved, but welcome to the new office. This is one of the filming spaces, but there obviously is a lot more to see, and you will see it through the retrospectives and tinker times and stuff. I still haven't worked out quite what I'm doing yet, so get ready to see the rest of the room. And hey, welcome to a rather different episode of Cadicorus, much like the Bloodborne Hints and Tips video, a chilled out episode. But just not hints and tips at all. I personally thought the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale was a decent game. Nothing original at all and nothing really that great. But you know what? For someone that grew up with PlayStation, yes, beating up Kratos as Parappa the Rapper was brilliant. But still, from the final product, I was sad that there were a few characters that weren't included or I was sad that there were a few character inclusions that were completely fucking lame. So I decided today to present to all of you my dream roster of characters from Psaspo. Sounds like a yummy pirate drink. The rules here are that, one, I'm not giving any legal consideration for why some characters can't be included. Two, I'm sticking to one character per franchise. Three, if there's a stage within the original game based around a certain character, such as Patapon or Loco Roco, I won't add their character to the roster. Four, I can add or take away anyone from the original game. Five, when games are released has no effect on my dream characters. And six, if a character from a franchise was already in the original game, I won't add another. So big boss, I'm sorry. I and took your place. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, there are more rules here than professional kickboxing. This is literally just a dream list of characters for a future potential game in an ideal world where there was no conflict and no issues with any of these characters being included. And that's kind of all I have to say, really. I was going to make this a top 10 video, but I had far too many ideas, and also I couldn't actually like number them. I couldn't put them in a certain order. So today, instead, we're going to be boring and do it alphabetically. Yay! First off, I definitely have to pick Abe from Oddworld, an unofficial mascot for PlayStation for many years. I was shocked he wasn't in there to begin with, especially with his slapping in Abe's Exodus and chanting ability that could work like Kirby and Smash Bros with the ability stealing or possession. Or, you know, instead of Abe, just have a Glucken and have him be the most powerful character. Yeah, he just flops around and falls on his face and is impossible to control. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> Talking of mascots, even though not really a face of the PS1, his game certainly was Alucard from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Easily one of the best games of the era, let alone the PS1, and one of the most badass characters from that era. I mean, come on, the guy practically helped invent a new genre, and his attack range is literally endless. I'm afraid though he'd have to be an unlockable, because he's a little bit too powerful for his own good. I don't quite know how fighting as a dog would actually feel in a game like All Stars, but hell, in Okami, Amaratsu proves to be an extremely agile and capable warrior despite being a dog, wolf, thing. I haven't got much else to say. Okami is yet another classic and one that, in my opinion, is best experienced on the HD re-release on PS3, so let's get Amaratsu on the game, okay? I'd also like to include Atwa from Tearaway. She's just so fucking cute. That's that's all I've got to say. Next up from Resident Evil's many terrific characters, Barry Burton, the best character in the history of games. The taunts would be simply divine. That and he has a trusty old magnum he always carries around. And of course, he was part of the original game that helped put survival horror and the PS1 on the map. I'd love to see a Jill Sandwich special move. That would be amazing. But you would have to work for him and get him unlocked. Trust me, we can't let loose the powers of the Jill Sandwich or the Master of Unlocking special techniques that early into the game. As for my first character to keep from the original game, Big Daddy. Because geez, it's a fucking Big Daddy. Also, let's add in Brave Fencer Musashi. Because geez, it's fucking Brave Fencer Musashi. And following these characters, appropriately enough, Bubsy the Bobcat. Not because he's a classic PS character or has appeared in any decent games, but because his exclusive outing on PS1 is infamous for being one of the worst games ever made. He's part of PlayStation history, and I'm sure that people would love to drill his annoying face in with Big Daddy's hand. That's the only reason he's here. In order for people to beat the shit out of him. And that's why he should be unlockable. Because you're gonna have to work your ass off if you want to unlock him to beat the shit out of him. 
While on the subject of Bubsy, let's go ahead and add Cloud Strife. I may not like Final Fantasy at all, but come on, this guy was the sole reason many people even got a PS1 in the first place, and that has to account for something. I'd also like to keep Cole McGrath from Infamous on the original lineup, but definitely ditch Evil Cole, because what the fuck, Zony? That shit was like pink, gold, peach levels of cheap and tacky. Next up, obviously, Crash Bandicoot, the original ultra-famous and unique mascot for the earliest years of the PlayStation, and he lasted well off into the PS2's ending years. Who owns him now? I have no idea by this point, but just to ignore him and not have any kind of reference or inclusion in the original just seemed wrong. Not to mention spinning, bazookering, belly flopping, he'd also make a decent fighter. I'd love to see him there. Okay, my next ideal character would be Croc. Not the best game series in the world, and not who I'd call an obvious fighter, but still an extremely memorable platformer character best associated with the PlayStation, so it would be a great injection of cuteness from another game with lots of techno music and dark mature characters. He could also throw gobos and shit. Imagine his voice effects as he goes against Dante. Shazam! Kushpat! Too cute. Oh, I shall have to unlock him as well. Why? Because some characters with familiar faces need to be thrown into the unlock pile. And hey, it makes sense. The gobos are in cages. You have to unlock them. So you have to save the cuteness, otherwise you're a fucking terrible person. Speak of the devil, I'd also keep Dante from the original game as well. I'm honestly not bothered about replacing him with the original Dante because they're both just as silly as each other. I know that my opinion was different a few years ago, but fucking hell, that was a few years ago. Shut up, I was young and I was foolish. As long as he's there, I'm happy. I was gonna add in a random hunter from Bloodborne here, but I thought, nah, how about Eileen the Crow instead? One of the coolest, most collected and badass hunter of hunters from the game, and one with a fantastic side quest within the game to boot. She doesn't take shit from anyone and has many unique fighting styles and items to confuse and frighten her opponents. Not to mention, if you attack her, she'll own you if you aren't ready, especially if you're at the wrong level. I also love her voice. Next, I'd love to see Ellie from The Last of Us. Yeah, I know Joel would be the obvious choice here, but I think he'd be a little bit too old, battered, and boring for the chaos in the game. Ellie seems much more primed and ready to kick ass. She's got her stealthy knife and all those handmade molotovs and nail bombs. It'd be sweet. And how about a special move involving spores? I mean, she is immune after all, so everyone's energy could be decreasing over time if she uses that attack while she appears completely unaffected. It would be pretty cool. If she was an unlockable as well, then that'd be fantastic because we'd already have the pre-mentioned Crash and Jack and Daxter and Nathan Drake, so we need to unlock some kind of badass Naughty Dog character and I think she'd be perfect for it. Another original character, Fat Princess. She's hilarious. That is all. You know what, while we're here, let's include Gabe Logan from Siphon Filter, an often forgotten series from the PS1 and one with a lot of innovative shit going on for third person shooters. He's a badass secret agent with many gadgets, so the reasons for his inclusion are obvious. Following Gabe, another right old G would be Gex. Yes, his taunting would be insufferable, but with all the possibilities of special moves and basic attacks from all his costumes and abilities from the media dimension, the possibilities for his move set are endless. Not to mention climbing walls and tail bouncing? That'd be awesome, and it would make him stand out and worth playing. So basically, I'd also keep Heihachi Mishima from Tekken. He's hilarious. That is all. For another addition, Eco from, well, Eco. He has a big stick. He can hit people with it. And he can also shout, Aah! as a special move to blow his foes away, or even call Yorda out to help by grabbing her hand and flinging her. It'd be funny. Make him an unlock as well, because he will see you later. Okay, so he may not be the greatest character of PlayStation history with a game that was also on the N64, but the PS version was the best, so he'd fit in right on here. Ignatius Blackwater from Nightmare Creatures. Not only has he got an amazing name and I'd love to see him in high def, but he's got another big stick to slay demons with, and one that's fitted with saw blades, spikes, fire, anything really. And he's also got that Victorian black magic arsenal from poisonous skulls to repellent potion to create a very diverse and unique playstyle different from any other guns and basic shit like that. Next, I'd keep Isaac Clark from Dead Space. He won't be DLC though. He should not have been DLC. Ugh. 
I'd also love to include Jackie Estacado from The Darkness in the game. Yeah, he was multi-platform and he's from a comic, but he's also incredibly unloved nowadays in gaming, so I'd be more than happy to have him on board. He'd look threatening, wield two guns, and of course, he has The Darkness. Could you imagine ripping out Fat Princess's heart with an alien tentacle voiced by Mike Patton? If he was unlockable as well, I am sure that people would actually want to try unlocking this demonic heart eating ah oh, man. I know everyone talks about what an awesome character Jade from Beyond Good and Evil is, and yeah, they're right. And I reckon the PS2 version of the game defined her game's place on the essential list of getting a console for a particular game. So she needs more love. If there's no sequel, at least give her a fighting spot among other PlayStation greats. Of course we must also keep Jack and Daxter, because they're Jack and Daxter, practically the reason many people upgraded from PS1 to PS2. They are icons, and icons with many fighting tricks up their sleeves. Okay, so I know Velocity isn't a PlayStation franchise by any means, but Velocity 2X is a PlayStation exclusive, so yeah. Let's get Kaitana on the game. She's a great character who makes the best out of bad situations instead of just getting all angsty and annoying, and in 2X, she's a fucking cyborg that has an unlimited firing arm cannon, the ability to super sprint, and the ability to teleport. She could easily be one of the fastest and trickiest fighters to use, but extremely satisfying and rewarding to those who can master her speeds, and she could also use her ship as an additional platform, or additional firepower, who knows? That'd be cool. Okay, Okay, so I haven't played PS Vita's Gravity Rush, but I'd be damned if I say we shouldn't keep Cat and Dusty in the game because they're awesome. For the way they battle in-game, it makes me want to try Gravity Rush out. Again, just not DLC, for fuck's sake. Hey, you know who's just as cute as Croc? Klonoa! He can pick up enemies and inflate them, then use them for either extra ground coverage or use them against his enemies. And yeah, it would be cool to use his fighting style base like that. Like, maybe make him ultra powerful, but only have him attack by throwing other characters at each other, and make him very weak and lightweight to truly get clobbered. I don't know, make him a special case character like a few previous suggestions, because lord knows, most characters in All Stars practically play the exact same way. Also, come on, you've got to keep Kratos. He's Kratos. He's an asshole. How about if Kratos married Lara Croft? You'd have a baby Lara Croftos, I guess. That has nothing to do with Lara, but come on, her original PS1 outing is iconic. Yeah, she's now sniffing glue with Microsoft for extra money nowadays, but damn it, she was another PS mascot in the day for her revolutionary third-person exploration combat. She's got loads of guns, and yes, isn't famous for melee attacks, so not too exciting all things considered, but I guess a few priceless treasures could be used in the combat? Even if she just picks up urns and throws them at other people, allowing them to get blinded by dead people dust? I don't know. Again, a multi-platform game, but one that is indeed rather unloved as far as I'm concerned, so I'd like to steal Max Payne and use him to my heart's content. Much like Lara Croft, I'm sure his moveset won't be unique, but painkillers could be dropped on the battlefield for people to walk into and trip out, or how about special bullet time mode where time slows down and Max jumps around everywhere? He could even use background cover in some of the stages after his trademark diving. Melia is my favourite character from Psychonauts for her backstory and how, despite it, she managed to gain fame around the block by being one of the bounciest psychics around. With her levitation abilities and dance parties, she could have a very unique set of maybe not necessarily damaging, but extremely distracting special moves that work to her advantage if she decides to throw herself into a fight. Also, look at her neck. Let's fight by swinging her head around, please. No one can stop Mr. Domino, you say? Well, let's put that statement to the test and throw him in the ring with Kratos. He'd just be so happy. Yeah, Mr. Domino was obscure for sure, but the PS1 was great for completely unknown IPs that everyone missed out on, so he needs to make a comeback here. His attacks could literally be anything Domino-related. He could drop dominoes for people or himself to knock over, and the bigger the chain, the more powerful the attack at the end of the chain when it falls down and potentially hits someone. So do you take that risk for a longer chain and a larger attack for a small chance of hitting, or just plant them everywhere for tiny damage, hitting everybody at the same time. Also, you'll have to unlock him, because if anyone wants to see how badass this character was, you're gonna need to get him yourself. Next up, another original, Nathan Drake. I mean, come on, it's Nathan Drake. He's sexy. And while on the subject of originals, Parappa needs to stay too. I never knew how good of a fighter he could be, but damn, Chop Chop Master Onion works magic. You know what would be cool? The prince rolling around a huge Katamari ball to decimate everyone with a special move. And maybe this tiny little guy doing loads of fast and pathetic punches and kicks? That would be so funny. Okay, well, something Katamari related needs to be here. I mean, it's one of PlayStation's greatest franchises from the PS2, PSP, and PS3. Why not? Or a stage? With the king? Anyone? 
crashed from one P to another Pyramid Head from Silent Hill 2. Yeah, he was on Xbox with the HD remake, but that port was fucking horrible. Instead, let's talk about his grace and majesty on the PS2. Now, I don't really know what he would be like in All Stars. Would we make him a ridiculously badass warrior and suck all the meaning and depth out of him like in the second movie? Or do we make him slow, clumsy, insane and creepy, dealing high damage but, yeah, being really slow? I don't really know, but the possibilities of bringing forward Silent Hill characters forward into battle is too exciting not to think about. Even distortion from a crackling radio would be cool as like a special move or something. Also, make him an unlockable. Why? Because could you imagine playing PlayStation All-Stars and having you have unlocked Pyramid Head pop up on the screen? Raiden! I'd have to keep the Cyborg Ninja over Solid Snake for a tournament fighter any day. Stay in Brawl where you belong, Snake. You're great in that. Ratchet and Clank! I'd have to keep them because they're Ratchet and Clank! From a fake Smash Wii U leak to my dream list, Rayman should be included. He's a badass fighter, he has no limbs. Imagine the throw potential, long reaching attacks, dodging possibilities, he could be the most agile fighter out there. And he made a name for himself on the PS1 with the original game, even if the sequel appeared literally fucking everywhere else. You know what, Robert may have a dumb fucking name, but Jumping Flash is anything but dumb. Okay, that's a lie, yeah. it is dumb, but it's also great, and one of the earliest innovators for true 3D platforming and FPS gameplay that actually did it extremely well, and all for the 32-bit PS1. Robert is a robotic rabbit, I mean, the fighting style writes itself. Get some high bouncing in and a few missiles, and you could easily travel the battle arenas and strategically fight unlike any other character. Maybe make Robert an unlockable as well, purely for the battle of PlayStation nostalgia for all the other players out there. Here's a question, who remembers Roscoe McQueen? Hilarious blonde Bruce Campbell firefighter on PS1? Yeah, he could work beautifully, using a trusty axe, punching and kicking with more than capable looking limbs, and his water hose, working potentially like a permanent flood that Mario uses from Smash Brothers, but having every special attack work around the hose instead of just one dedicated special. Hose blasts, hose sprays, or maybe even throwing a Molotov to damage people, but also the fire can damage him, so you can either leave the fire growing and raging to kill everybody, including you eventually if you're not careful, or play it safer and put the flames out with your hose at the cost of not attacking everyone else. But maybe he's best as an unlock, because imagine if you unlocked him, and then you sat there and you didn't know who he was, and you are just like, what the fuck? Original lineup has Sackboy. Sackboy is cute. He stays. Original lineup has Sir Daniel Fortescue. Sir Daniel Fortescue is cute. He stays. Original lineup has Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper is a Sly Cooper. He stays. Sora is like one of the major players on the PS2, so major that the Keyblade itself has become some sort of statement. He'd be cool to fight as, he'd probably play the same way as anyone else with a sword, but with all those Kingdom Hearts action RPG elements, the potential is massive. Maybe using tiny Disney friends special attacks like Stitch or the Genie to cause havoc. Oh my god, sparks the imagination. And because Kingdom Hearts has one of the most rabid diehard fan bases I've ever seen personally, you're gonna have to unlock him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to piss off all of the hardcore fans. I think that would be quite funny. You're gonna have to work to get him, my pretties. I was so happy that Ape Escape was remembered and rightfully included into the original game. So Spike, yes, you stay here, you beautiful ape-catching bastard. Here we go, an obvious choice, but one that's arguably just as important as Crash for PlayStation as a whole. Spyro, his purple annoying counterpart. As a four-legged creature that only has horns and fire breath, it'd be hard to say what he could bring to the table exactly in terms of fighting, but I'm thinking his wings could provide unique ways of shielding or getting around the stage. And how about the multiple breath mechanics from the outright broken end to the dragonfly? Yeah, I'm not sure how fun it would be to fight as him with the breathing possibly getting stale and unsatisfying the more you play as him, but come on, it's Spyro, one of the main players of the station. I'm not a fucking game dev, you come up with the ideas. Okay. It may shock you to know that I've never actually played Twisted Metal, but from the original lineup, Sweet Tooth stays. His face is like such an epitome of PlayStation that it's the first thing I think about when I hear the word clown. Also, he fights alright. Oh my goodness, I can't not include Tombi on my list of dreams. Maybe my video putting the first game as my absolute favourite PS1 game of all time was a bit of a stretch. I mean, I think the sequel is better, so maybe Tombi 2 should be number one on that video. But good god, just like Mr. Domino, Tombi was a character you probably only ever heard about if you had access to those heavenly demo discs on PS1. And for a dead franchise that seriously needs a comeback, yes, Tombi needs to rise up as another PlayStation mascot once again. He may have failed twice and fell into obscurity despite his great games, but damn it, he needs to come back with his boomerang, blackjack, and jumping on people to buy them and throw them, and I'm sure the cult followers of his classic and special console defining games that I'm glad PlayStation only ever had would love to see him in another game. Or Tomba, if you prefer. 
even if it sounds much bloody dumber. Um Jamalami. Okay, this is some Jamalami. Not the same franchise as Parappa the Rapper, even though their universes do coexist. She's her own beast with her own game. And for being a much more realistic and relatable character than Parappa, not to mention more badass with her shredding, she'd look great as an all-star. Imagine playing musical notes to attack, or smacking people with a guitar, or using the hose yet again. Or shredding so loudly that you deafen characters around you. The longer you hold the button, the larger the effect. I mean, if Parappa works with a skateboard, you might as well just let Lammy rollerblade at people's faces. Fuck me, I'd be happy with that. Also make her an unlock because she's a little bit too similar to Parappa. Next up, oh look, another na 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 title, Vib Ribbon, and one with the adorable and probably the most distinctive looking obscure PlayStation character to ever exist, Vibri. She could skip across the map, jump, spin, roll and extend her legs, become a queen for different, more powerful attacks if she can score a certain combo without taking a single hit back, or use the frog and worm forms for even more unique attacks. And please tell me, how does the idea of huge special attacks involving huge musical waves and many different shapes sweeping the stage totaling anyone who doesn't dodge them in time? Just like within the game, itself? Yeah. That does that sound good? Yeah, please. And for my final character, Wanda from Shadow of the Colossus, my team eco substitute for having to unlock eco. See, I told you I'd explain later. Also, A, Shadow of the Colossus is a PS2 classic and I'm confused why there hasn't been at least a stage of it in the original, and B, if this kid can slay loads of these gigantic beasts with nothing but a sword and a horse, Christ, he needs to battle with his sword. Maybe let him grab the vertical walls with his immense holding skills, or maybe even just get the horse into charge. Either way, I'm sure it'd be cool. Oh my god, you could summon a Colossi to kill everyone! There you have it, everyone. Well done if you stayed until the end of this very, very, very long journey of my ideal over 40 characters for a potential other PlayStation All-Stars game. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but hey, Smash Wii U has pretty much the same amount of characters if you include all the unlockables and DLC, so... Who knows, maybe with a bit of persuasion and a bit of nipple tweaking, we could make this game a reality. Who knows? I don't know, you know? You work a PlayStation! I don't know, we can only imagine. And until next time, if it's your birthday today watching this video, then happy freaking birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. Yeah, did you hear that? That was my good friend Patient Zero, and he's just released a new album known as Echo, and it's a good example of what happens when you plug a broken brain into a synthesizer. Patient Zero is probably best known for doing that Diggy Diggy Hole song from a few years ago, but if you think that's all he has to offer, well, you're just... You're, you're wrong. This new album is basically available everywhere. You can get it on the iTunes Store or Amazon. It's on Spotify and the Google Play Store. And you can even listen to the whole album for free on YouTube or straight up from his Bandcamp page. And if you pick it up on Bandcamp, you also get a bonus copy of Reverb, the PDF booklet that goes along with the album. It's full of all kinds of information and definitely worth a read. It's pretty funny too, and every page is beautifully designed. Thanks for listening, everyone, and go in the description for more info. He's awesome. And hello again, everybody. If you'd like to check the description, you can find all my social medias and even my Games Grabber collection where you can see what equipment I use for videos and what games I'm buying and playing and get everything directly from the site. Also, have a look on the screen right now for more videos. Also, if it's your birthday day watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. Please remember to stay beautiful, click on anything, and here are some outtakes for you. Love you. I mean, she's immune, so he could infect everyone else on screen and have them decrease in energy over time while she goes around being alright. That was so terrible, I need to do that again. <laughs> Talking of mascots, even though not really a face of the PS1, his game certainly was Alucard from Castlevania Symphony of the... Oh, that was disgusting.